Hello traders, this is Rich from TradeSite. This is a look at our market preview for the coming session. This is going to be for Friday, July 26th, 2013. We had a very, very flat day after uh, some, some decent intraday movement, but uh, at the end of the, at the, end of the uh, session we had uh, the S&P and the NASDAQ futures es essentially unchanged on the day, and the uh, Dow did nothing to uh, diverge from that. So all in all, we had uh, pretty flat action here. Uh, the advanced declines were very, very modestly positive, which is uh, which is something that the bulls can build on since they weren't negative, even even though the uh, even though the market did very, very little. But uh, let's take a look at the uh, major index index futures and see what they have to tell us. All right, so here's a look at the ES futures. So you can see that we uh, gapped down a little bit on the day and basically just kind of walked up to close the gap. Tried some higher prices found resistance at 1687.50 and at the end of the day are still essentially in the same little range that we've been in. We expanded the range to the downside uh, just a little bit uh, on this session versus the previous session but uh, there's really not too much uh, te technically to hang your hat on. The only uh, real positive here is that is that uh, the bulls were able to close the market up on the day but even more importantly uh, above the day's open even though we gapped down. So key resistance remains at uh, 1687.50, which is the 8 ace level. Then uh, this week's high to the downside, the 10 EMA, as you saw today, uh, is going to be key support. And if that gives way, the 6 ace level at 1656. The MACD does have a little bit of a downward slope to it, but has not crossed over the signal line yet. So uh, that is uh, still pending, if you will. Looking at the, uh, the NASDAQ futures. NASDAQ's futures are still kind of bunched in here. Got a lot of closes, uh, kind of right in the same area, the 6 ace level, which is the uh, roughly the origin of this prior high here from uh, late May, early June. So 3046 is key level here for NASDAQ. Up above 3085, 3086 is going to be resistance where the uh, high water mark was set on this move into the downside this week's low. At 3,022, 3,023 is going to be uh, near-term support. MACD here has crossed, but hasn't picked up any uh, any momentum yet off of the uh, off of that signal just yet. Here's a look at our 10-day trend. The trend closed below 0.9 today, so we did get a little bit of a drop in the 10-day average, but we're still above that uh, 0 0.85 reversal threshold. We could see that, but uh, but haven't seen it just yet. So stand by for this. Have to see how the next couple of days. Uh, days work their way into the average. So for now, uh, we do still have this this uh, this downward bias, but we're not uh, not uh, climatically overbought yet. All right. The other thing to keep uh, keep an eye on when uh, looking for an inflection point is the total put call ratio. So that's the number of the uh, puts divided by calls. And right now we're still kind of in the mid in in the midpoint here of the uh, overall uh, chart. So there's nothing nothing here that uh, signals any kind of climactic activity just yet. All right, so here's a look at the uh, the, the SOX versus the NDX. This is one of the key components to uh, really kind of keep the ball rolling for the overall NDX, and the SOX did not perform very well today. Didn't do anything to lift the uh, lift this ratio and assert itself as a leader within the uh, overall NDX. So this is kind of a kind of a missed uh, missed opportunity here for the bulls. So it's have to make sure that we can reclaim this level fairly quickly because right now we're moving in the wrong direction if you're bullish on the market. Here's a look at the Dow Gold Ratio. The Dow Gold Ratio did not lose any ground today, but also also didn't really assert itself either way. This does look like something that's kind of overdone in one direction and definitely could uh, see the uh, see this lower regression band tagged. If that happens, we'll definitely be in the midst of a, of a little bit of a risk-off episode. So I have to stand by and see if we can break this to the downside. That would be strength in gold and weakness in overall equities. All right, so here's a look at the, the multi-sector daily chart. A little bit of a bump in the XAU, but nothing really to write home about. The uh, banks were, were uh, fairly weak. That's the green line. BTK was definitely stronger than, than most of the overall uh, averages. It had just a, just a tiny, tiny curl up in the, uh, in the SOX index. So kind of just a ho hum day, which really kind of just fits with uh, what we saw in the uh, in the major averages today. All right, so here's a look at the uh, here's a look at the 
major sectors ranked from best to worst. Uh, you see the XAU was uh, was near the top of the list. The broker deals were okay. The socks were kind of buried in the middle with a little bit of a bump up, but uh, but nothing 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 too strong. Uh, the housing sector was really really weak today. Bomb on the barrel here, down two and a half percent. And the OSX was also fairly weak today. BKX also trailed the uh, the overall market. Here's a look at the XAU. The XAU is still holding above that 50 DMA. The real point of interest in the uh, XAU index is if it can get over about 104, 104 and a quarter, that will clear this week's high and uh, and really start to kick in the momentum. We did get across above the zero line in the MACD, so the door is definitely open for some upside uh, upside momentum. The SOX was, you know, very slightly positive on the day, but the thing here is it basically just used the 50 DMA for support, which is, which is uh, really not that surprising. So I wouldn't say, oh, look, they're, they're coming in to buy the SOX. It's really probably just a little bit of a, of a short-term oversold bounce. This is the third day down. They tend to buy the third day down. Uh, at least that's the very uh, short-term players in the uh, on the short side of the market tend to take off a little bit then. So that should be no surprise. We are still below the 10 EMA, which is short-term negative, and we do have this bearish MACD cross to the downside. So that's definitely uh, things that uh, should be f figured into your um, mix of thinking. This is, these are real technical developments. The BTK opened fairly low on the day and was uh, was up on the day, but really didn't didn't get anywhere as far as the previous day's candle. Yesterday's high, not today's session, the day before, is going to be key resistance at 2156. Support is going to be 2062, which is this 5 ace level and also the origin of the breakout. It should be, should be fairly substantial the first time. You can also see here, relative to this gap, we got close to closing the gap, but came up a little bit short. So that's still on the to-do list for the bears. And keep in mind that we do have this, uh, this bearish uh, cross in the MACD that's still active. The BKX, uh, kind of sloppy today. Used the 10 EMA for support. We just completed nine bars up as of yesterday, so we're still in what we're probably going to see here is either going to be kind of a lateral movement to work that off or a correction to the downside. We'll definitely know a little bit more tomorrow. If we settle below the 10 EMA here, we're going to put this 5 ace level, which is roughly coincident with the active static trend line in play at about 64. The OSX was sloppy and lower on the day. It's kind of just gaming this 8 ace level. This is where the power of, the, of that, those 8 ace levels comes, comes into play. So 265.63, right here, 8 ace on the GAN box is going to be key support. If we break that, 261.72, uh, which is almost today's low, and then the 50 DMA is going to be support at about 259.5. The housing index was last laggard. You can see we've got two pretty bearish candles here. We made another close below the 200 DMA. We broke down out of this little consolidation range here. So this is definitely negative. The MACD tried to turn up here but never got any kind of decent penetration above the zero line. So that has yet to release any kind of momentum. So we're now back down below all three, three major moving averages, the 200, the 50, and the 10. So this uh, chart is back to, uh, back to negative for sure. Uh, keep in mind that this zero ace level at 175 is going to be um, pretty important support here. All right, folks, as always, thanks for listening. This has been Rich for TradeSite.